great debate. Bethesda versus Arlington. When people are planning to move to the DC area, a lot of times when they're looking at areas outside of the city, it comes down to one of two places, and that is Bethesda or Arlington. So there's a lot of similarities between these two, and they are both very close to downtown DC, which make them very popular with people and very attractive. But which one's right for you and which one should you pick? Well, let's talk about it. I am Melissa Terzis, DC Real Estate Mama. This is my channel, Living in DC, and I bring all things to you about living in the DC area. If that is your thing, go ahead and subscribe so that when I put up new videos every week that you'll be notified that they are live. I try to do them every Wednesday. Uh, if, also, if you need me, my contact info is going to be put right here, like magic. My contact info is here. If you have any questions or you need anything, just go ahead and um, call or email and I will get right back with you and answer whatever it is that you need. All right, so let's talk about Bethesda and Arlington. Bethesda is in Southern Montgomery County, Maryland. It is um, against the border of DC. So it really is like the first suburb, if you want to call it that, on its on your way out of the district towards Maryland. Uh, it is just inside the Beltway. Arlington, also inside the Beltway. Arlington is a county. It's also its own mailing address. So everybody who lives in Arlington has an Arlington mailing address, uh, and, the, and that's the county, and that is also completely completely inside the Beltway as well, so it makes these areas very attractive for commuting, which is what we're going to talk about in a quick second. First, let's talk about the business and economy. While each of these areas, Bethesda and Arlington, are both comprised of dozens of other little neighborhoods that have their own personality. Uh, generally speaking, you're going to see that companies, for the most part, do not relocate to Maryland or find themselves with a headquarters in Maryland as much as they might in Northern Virginia and Arlington specifically has been the benefactor of Amazon's headquarters to HQ2 arriving in Amazon's uh, national landing neighborhood, which is where Pentagon City, Crystal City is now to so be renamed. So Amazon, Raytheon, Boeing, Nestle, more corporate headquarters will choose to locate on the Virginia side of the Potomac. And you've got Tyson's also, which is its own city. And all of this, even though this isn't specifically Arlington, it plays in when we talk about commute in a second. So the other thing to know is that a lot of the neighborhoods that are bringing their corporate headquarters to Arlington are also making them like walkable and more planned communities. Virginia hasn't necessarily necessarily been known for being quite walkable, but they're trying to change that at this point by kind of making everything a lot more pedestrian friendly. All right, let's talk about the commute now. So well, how, is, how is living in one or the other going to affect your commute? Well, where are you going? I mean, that's the first question, really. You know, D.C. used to be that, yes, there were some other job centers located in other areas, but for the most part, you would just see like a throng of people commuting to downtown D.C. It's still like that, but not as much as it used to be because as companies have located in other areas, like Tyson's Corner, for example, is like become a big business area and a big draw. If you're in Arlington and you're commuting to Tyson's, your commute is going to be a lot easier than if it's, say, Bethesda and you've got to come around 495 and drive over the river. So from Bethesda, you're probably wanting to take the metro if you go downtown. If you have to go out to Tyson's or anything in Virginia, you probably want to drive. That is going to be um, complete annihilation. You are not going to love your life if you're driving from Bethesda into Northern Virginia every day on the regular. So if you're going to downtown DC, you can commute by metro. It would probably be anywhere from a 20 to a 40 minute metro ride, just depending on how many stops there are, or if there's track work or if something happens. And that does happen a lot on metro because the line that runs from Bethesda to downtown, which is the red line, is the oldest metro line and thus tends to have more problems than some of the other metro lines. Okay, so in, if you're living in Arlington, getting to downtown DC, you could either metro or you could drive. People choose to do both. There's really not a huge preference of one over the other, just depending on where it is that you're going into DC and how adequate parking may be around there. But you're basically looking at anywhere from like a 15 to a 30 minute commute, depending on what part of Arlington that you're actually in. If you live in Arlington and you're heading to Tyson's, this is a much, much easier conversation to have. You're going to be heading eh, somewhat against traffic, but regardless, you're probably looking at like about a 25 to 30 minute drive in traffic and that's 
potentially like a bad day. Uh, so crossing that Potomac River, as you can see, is really a hurdle for people. So depending where you're going to work, you definitely want to take a look at that. Uh, the other thing that people do find kind of strange about Virginia is because there is so much traffic there, they have toll lanes that can sometimes be confusing. Some kick into gear at certain times. Some highways are completely toll lanes 24 seven. Others just have certain time frames that they actually become toll. It's, it can be confusing to say the least. Regardless, that's the situation with the commute. So real estate, the average Bethesda house in the last year has closed for $1.565 million. The average Arlington house in the past year has closed for $1.297 million. Now Arlington has two parts, north and south. South Arlington prices tend to be lower, even though they are kind of catching up, but South Arlington's much smaller. The houses were also smaller, built at a different period of time than, than the ones you tend to see in North Arlington. If we net out South Arlington and we just look at the average price point for North Arlington in the last year, that's 1.407 million. So that's a little bit closer to your Bethesda price, but Bethesda is still 160,000 uh, dollars higher than the average price. Now, Virginia is also a lot more tear down and builder friendly. Maryland has way more rules and restrictions on tearing down houses. So the housing stock that you're going to see in Maryland tends to be older homes that maybe have been renovated. Um, you're going to see a lot of colonials and Georgians and things like that, a lot of brick. You're going to see a different kind of housing stock in Virginia. You will still have that in Arlington, but you're going to see a lot of newer homes that maybe have been torn down that were, that were on smaller lots that are smaller houses that were on lots that were decent size and then they build this house that they call a McMansion. A lot of them are arts and crafts style, farmhouse style, things like that. One interesting note, Arlington's actually, this is like in the process right now, fall of 2022. Arlington is looking at eliminating all single family home zoning this fall, which would actually be pretty progressive housing reform. The Washington Post cites that from the years 2010 to 2019, developers built an about 11,370 housing units. However, Arlington got 30,000 new residents. So you can see where the housing supply is kind of problematic in Arlington. The Post also noted county data that indicates 1,245 single-family homes were torn down between 2009 and 2019, and they had an average of 1,500 square feet. What they were replaced with was homes three times the size for an average of $1.7 million. So proponents of the new potential reform to this zoning code argue that if one of these homes is torn down and just replaced with a single-family home, you're just replacing like for like just putting a bigger product on this, you know, the same lot. But if you put, if you made this zoned so that it had to be multifamily, either a duplex, they're talking up to like a four unit condo to an eight unit condo, that you would have housing for a lot more people. So just know that this is kind of coming down the pike. What about taxes? People always ask about taxes. So taxes are going to be lower for you in Arlington when it comes to income taxes. If you make $100,000, you're gonna pay $7,800 in taxes to Maryland versus 5,500 on that amount to Virginia. As your salary goes up, you can obviously see that the savings can be quite significant. The differential here though, and a lot of times people kind of don't grasp this, is that Virginia does have a personal property tax on vehicles, trailers, RVs, and boats, which may require a lot of cash out of pocket if you've got uh, any of those things or all of those things. The tax is $4.13 per $100,000 of assessed value. So I think you can see that that actually, and that's yearly, and that actually can add up quite quickly if you have multiple vehicles and potentially an RV or a boat you may turn around and look at Maryland and say, okay, it's more cost effective to live there. So schools. Now, let's talk about schools for the kiddos. I've done two different videos for each on Montgomery County. I didn't specifically do Bethesda, but I did Montgomery County as a whole and then Arlington County as a whole for schools. Bethesda schools definitely rank highly. You have a lot of parental involvement in the early years, a huge focus on academic and extracurriculars. Montgomery County schools have kind of had a few rough years though, because 
because they took a beating with their COVID response and changes to the curriculum. I cover a lot of that in detail in the Montgomery County School video, so check that out. Arlington schools have had similar challenges, though, so it's not as though they sailed clear through this. It's similar to what happened in Montgomery County in terms of keeping people on, keeping all the students on the same pace and making sure that those that maybe have special needs or other needs aren't left behind. That has been a problem in both school districts. Now, it's with schools, I also kind of want to talk a quick second about colleges. If you're thinking about schools because you also want to take a, you know advantage of the state college situation, Virginia has a, a lot more better and public universities, I would say, of all sizes and all competitiveness levels than Maryland does, where Maryland only has like a handful. Virginia has a lot more in terms of public universities. So shopping, all right, so in Bethesda, you've got the downtown shopping of Bethesda Row. In Bethesda Row, you're gonna see all of your usual and typical chain stores. You'll have Apple and things like that that are there. And then on all the side streets, you have all these awesome little mom and pop shops and individual restaurants that aren't part of chains or maybe part of like a local chain in the DC area. And uh, retail in Bethesda, for the most part, is in more focused areas because Montgomery County has just certain retail areas where they allow development. It's gonna feel different in Virginia. Virginia is a lot more built up and a lot more commercial in a lot of aspects. So even if you get, you know, you get into parts of North Arlington, that may feel very suburban to you, similar to like what Bethesda would. But Arlington has a lot more like business centers and business corridors. They've got, you know, a corridor that runs from Roslyn through Boston. That's Wilson and Clarendon Boulevard, tons of shops and restaurants along there. You've got other shopping centers all along in different neighborhoods. And then you've got everything happening in Pentagon City, as well as Columbia Pike, which is also a main kind of retail drag that's going through a redevelopment. All right, a quick note about politics. They don't love for realtors to get involved with politics and things like that, because what we say may be different than your experience. But what I will say, generally speaking, is that if you look at any map to kind of see which way the area sways, it goes the way you would expect of a big city, both in Bethesda and Arlington. It trends blue, it trends left, it trends liberal, it trends Democrat, all those things. So just kind of know that. It, it doesn't take long, though, to get into the upper reaches of of like say Maryland or the outer areas of Virginia to feel like it might be a little bit of a different political climate. It's just that you should know when you're close in that, that both areas there's going to be people that say because Maryland has historically always been a Democrat state that Bethesda is going to always be more democratic. I, it's hard to paint that with a broad brush though than compared to Virginia because you do have people that move here and if they're not from here, they'll move wherever in the metro area. People that are from here often feel very much like I'm a Maryland person or I'm a Virginia person and there's like no two ways about that. All right, let's talk about parks and recreation, and outdoor kind of activities and other fun. Bethesda is densely packed with families of all ages, everything from little kids all the way to even adult children, right? But there are opportunities for kids' sports, lots of playgrounds, parks, and hiking, things like that. Uh, I have my kids enrolled in classes at Imagination Stage, which is they're doing like improv comedy, but they've taken drama classes there, stage makeup, things like that. So there's definitely a lot in Bethesda in terms of activities that you can do for kids and with kids. As far as Arlington goes, Arlington definitely feels more developed, but the city claims that everybody in Arlington can walk to one of the Arlington parks within 10 minutes. The parks are very well maintained and lots of fun. We were actually just at a birthday party at Upton Park. Um, their batting cages are there. There's mini golf, a huge climbing structure, and then they've got a few pools there. I didn't want to take a video of the pools because it's out of season and they're green now and filled with leaves. Uh, Parks and Recreation for Arlington is also pretty awesome. I'm signed up for a few classes there that I'm taking as well as the kids. I've got them signed up in a Zumba class and they love it. So it's, I would say that their Parks and Rec situation is very, very robust. All right, so where does it stand? Well, both 
Arlington and Bethesda are awesome places to live. They've got nice houses, they have good schools, they have decent suburban amenities. You're gonna find people who are gonna say that their side of the river is better than the other side, but what it really boils down to, in my opinion, is actually lifestyle. If you want a quieter community with less hustle and bustle, more of a suburb kind of feeling, Bethesda is actually probably your place. If you are thinking that you want more of a community that has a lot going on, new things happening all the time, and is more urban and a little bit faster paced, then I would say that Arlington is the place that you should look. That is that. I am Melissa Terzis, DC Real Estate Mama. My contact info is coming next.